Road Rash was released on the Sega Genesis by EA in 1991. It's a motorcycle racing game pitting you against 14 other bikers at a time, with the goal of placing in fourth or better in each of the five tracks to advance to the next level. There are five levels total, and once you complete them, you've essentially beaten the game, although you can keep playing for the sake of beefing up your cash total and destroying the total earnings all-time list, even though some of the racers on the list are active and their numbers never increase. What set this game apart mostly is the combat system. You can bump, punch, or kick other bikers off the track or onto their asses. And you can even use a club as a weapon by grabbing one off of someone who already has one. You not only have other bikers to deal with, but various other hazards, including oil slicks, rocks, cars from either side of the road, trees, signs, and even animals. If you wipe out, your biker will automatically run back to his bike, which creates a moment of tension and anxiety as you hope to hell that you don't let any of the other bikers whiz past you. Speaking of the other bikers, some of them will chime in before the start of each race with a comment, either talking trash, giving you tips, or random schmoozing that these types of folk might realistically be inclined to do over a beer before the race. These bits give your opponents some life, instead of just being two-dimensional interchangeable names that you'll see flash across the screen. There's Slater, the hip space shot, Biff, the yuppie douchebag, and Helldog, the intimidating asshole, among others. One of them, Natasha, is among the more helpful, but if you attack her during a race, she'll be pissed off at you the next time you see her. She's the only one whose tone is affected by her actions on the track, but it's pretty neat that it even happens at all. Other people you might strike up a chat with are the cops. These cops will arrest and fine you if one of them cruises by while you're off your bike or standing still on it. This gives you great incentive to be cautious whenever you're in the presence of one. Even finishing in last place and only taking home 50 bucks is much better than not finishing and paying a $400 fine. That's a $450 difference. Another way you can fuck up your race completely is by wrecking your bike if you wipe out too many times and have to pay for repairs. Some bikes are more durable than others, so take that into consideration when you're looking to upgrade. More on that later. The only way to get a game over is to run out of cash. The only way to lose money is to get busted or wrecked. So don't let this happen too often. And for the love of God, do not purchase a new bike the very second you can afford one. You'll be left with hardly any cash on hand, and you'll be at risk of losing it all. So save up a bit first. You can continue as long as you write down your password, as there's a password system, so thankfully you don't have to complete this game in one sitting, which is a good thing as it can take a while even if you qualify and to advance in every race. And as fun as this game is, playing through it for hours on end will wear on you. Now about the bikes. There are eight to choose from, and they vary in terms of size, horsepower, durability, and handling. But they don't give you any specific attributes for each bike. I mean, they do give you the weight and horsepower, along with a quick blurb on each one, which may give you a vague description on the other attributes, but it would have still been more helpful to have a rating system for each category. The other suggestion I would have thrown in there is the ability to buy other shit besides the bike itself. It would have been cool if you could buy parts to custom build your own bike, or include accessories like nitro boosters, or maybe even buy equipment that would help better protect your body, which would have paved the way for the feature of landing in the hospital if your health meter runs out. As it stands right now, it just knocks you off your bike. It's not a major complaint, it would have just added a new dimension to the game and bump up the replay value a bit. Not that the replay value needed to be bumped up by much, because the game was a fucking blast. The graphics were impressive for the time, and the soundtrack was utterly awesome. Of all the cheesy, MIDI-sounding, distorted guitar sounds that the Genesis was famous for, this is among the best. I love that dirty tone, and the riffs were memorable. The only major feature that the game lacks is a sound multiplayer option. You do have the two-player alternating mode, but we all know that a split screen would have just pushed the game off the cliff. We would see this feature surface when the sequel, Road Rash 2, was released a year later, but perhaps we'll get to that one another time. If you haven't played Road Rash and you enjoy games of the 16-bit era, you owe it to yourself to play it. It still holds up really well to this day. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.